What's up everybody and welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. Today we have another episode of Story Time. Yep. Well, I gotta fix this damn camera again. These stupid angles. So anyways, I got people um, asking... Actually, one person suggested I to make a video about how to become a personal trainer. And then other people asking how did I get involved in personal training. Now, this is where Story Time will begin. Back... I love when I go back in time. This is my back in time phase. Back, back in 1993, I did my first competition as a 17-year-old. Yep, 17 years old. I did the Colonial Classic. And that was a natural league up in New England. I want to say that it was in Cape Cod or somewhere up there. Anyways, Massachusetts somewhere. And then I did my second competition, which was the Northeastern Natural. Again, Massachusetts. I then graduated high school, went to college, went to art school, as I told you guys before in the, uh, the other video about the t-shirts, and quickly realized that wasn't really what I wanted to do. I didn't want to be an advertising and design major. I don't want to have deadlines. I don't want to have people up my ass saying, we need this, we need this now, Tuesday, 2 o'clock p.m. deadline. That, that wasn't for me. It was too much high pressure, and I didn't respond well to people telling me what to do at that point in my life, so I needed to figure out what I was going to do with my life. So I was like, hmm... Pro bodybuilder. That's what I'm going to do. Then I was like, you know what? I'm not big enough yet, but football player. I'm going to go home and play football for the University of Rhode Island. Now, I sucked at football in high school. I played, but I sucked. It was too small. What made me think I could play in college? I have no fucking clue. It was delusional. So <laughs> the next thing I do is I go back home to, to Rhode Island, back to training at the gym, which was Gold's Gym in Somerset, Massachusetts. Now, when I was there... I had met my training partner, Donnie, and Al Thurston, who was the guy that was helping us, he was like the owner of the gym, he, uh, he was always looking out for us. So, I mean, I talked about Al in my gym life video, which I want to be a bodybuilder as the first one. I think there's even a picture of Al in there. And there's actually uh, some stuff about him on my blog, too, if you go search for the blog. And Al suggested that, to me and Donnie, since you two are always in the gym, you want to be in the gym, you want to do bodybuilding and stuff, why don't you become personal trainers? And I was like, personal trainer. Well, can you make any money? And so I looked, I, I forget where I found out, where I get the information, because the internet wasn't really around back then. So it was like 33000 a year is what the average trainer was working, was making. So I was like, thirty-three grand a year. So I, was, I asked my parents, I was like, hey, is $33,000 a year good to make for a salary? And my parents were like, for who? I said, for me. Like for an 18-year-old kid? Yeah, that's good. So you should do that. So I said, all right, so me and Donnie get the books, which was the ISSA, the International Sports Science Association, and we studied the books, and then we had to take the exam. Now, you have to take this class with the exam. So who shows up to teach our class? You guys are going to love this one. Any of you old-timers will know this guy, but some of you new school guys may not know. Fred Hatfield, Dr. Fred Hatfield, a.k.a. Dr. Squat. Now, they call him Dr. Squat because... In competition, he was the first person to squat over a thousand pounds in a powerlifting competition. So this guy, you know, is legendary as far as his strength and size and all this stuff. He walks in, he's about five foot four, about a buck eighty-five, and he's a little old man. And I'm looking at him going, That's him? I'm like, holy shit. So, you know, in my head I'm saying, I thought he'd be bigger. No no online and shit, just pictures of magazine stuff you had back then. So he goes through everything. I mean he taught told us about drugs and sports and how many like Olympic athletes he worked with, professional athletes, and how they all use performance enhancing drugs. He went through all that stuff. He went through training, diet, all this stuff. And he made us, not promise, but he said, you know what? If you guys need to get the certification, I want you guys to give me your word that you're not going to offer up services to make them into professional athletes. Unless they already have, you know, they're on the track to that. Because you can't make somebody jump like Michael Jordan, nor can you make them strong like this or whatever. Because all of those athletes are enhanced. They all take drugs. And I know because I've seen it. So that was my first inclination. I was, I was natural at the time. You know, wow. Drugs are really heavily involved in sports all over the place. Not just Olympic sports, but like professional sports. Every professional Olympic athlete, he said, every single one, hands down, dopes. They're all using something. Now, you know, fast forward to 10, 15 years later, we're finding out that Swim teams are getting busted. Cross-country ski teams are getting busted. Golfers are getting busted. The most random sports, you know, probably fucking checkers, they're taking something to enhance their performance. But every 
sport has something that they're using to enhance their performance. So now you do the, the written test, then you have a practical part. Before you do the practical part, he takes you in the gym and he shows you these different exercises. So he says, oh, we're going to go do the cool one now. So he walks over to the squat rack, he puts the bar on the rack, puts two plates on one side, two plates on the other side, two plates, two plates. So he's got four or five on this thing. So now we're sitting here going, holy shit, we're going to see Dr. Squat squat. This is freaking cool. Dr. Squat's going to squat right now with us and show us how to squat. So he gets in the thing, and he picks the bar up, and he's talking to us. He walks up, and he says, the most important thing about squatting is when you get stuck knowing how to dump the bar. And then fucking throws it off his back and goes, bang, all over the floor. And that was his way of showing us how to dump the bar, which was totally cool, totally unexpected. But, you know, like, he was just that kind of edgy, like, you know, down-to-earth, like, cool guy. And then we took the exam, and then literally, I think, like, I don't know, three or four days later, you get your scores mailed to you in the mail, and you get this little card that you put in your wallet, it says you're certified, and then you get a certificate, which you're supposed to frame, put on your wall, or put on the gym wall, or whatever the fuck you want to do with it. And you're a certified personal trainer. Well, that's great. Now, how do you build up a clientele? Here's the part that's a pain in the ass. Unless you're at a gym that's feeding you clients, getting them at people in front of you, you have to be able to do that yourself. And that's very difficult if you've never done it before, especially if you're 19 years old and you don't really know shit about shit. And this is where I was like Ian McCarthy. I had read the books, I understood the information, but I never applied it. And then what happened was when I did try to apply it, it didn't always work. So now I'm like, well, shit, I'm supposed to be this personal trainer who has the answers to these people's fitness goals. But the book says this, and it does something totally different. What the fuck? So now, you know, me and Donnie talking it over and Al talking it over and everybody else in the gym, like, well, sometimes, you know, you can't go by the book. Sometimes you have to feel it out. Sometimes you have to figure it out on your own. Sometimes you're going to make your own way. I'm sitting there, 19 years old, I'm like, make my own way? What the fuck? I, I can't even make my own way from the, my house to the gym without forgetting, oh, shit, I forgot my bag at home. I got to go back home and get it. Now I got to make my own way. <clears throat> so this is why I understand where Ian's coming from. He has all the answers in that book, but when you haven't applied them, you don't realize... Some of them don't fucking work, and you need to find another way. So, yeah, I can relate to him really well, but the difference was I understood that, shit, there's got to be another way. And I listened to the people that were older than me that had been through it already and found a new way and said, you got to find your own way, develop your own techniques, and figure it out. So, eventually, I went on to work at Bally's, which was actually a pretty good job because they, you know, have more people coming through the doors that they would sit in front of you and did these orientations where you took their measurements, showed them the treadmill, then you had a chance to sell them training, and eventually went on to work at Gold's Gym, which Gold's is hands down one of the best places to go to, if you want to be a trainer, to learn how to sell your training. You're only going to be as good as the, the, the training that you sell, and if you can tell people why they need you and why you can help them. If you can't do that, you're not going to be a good trainer because you're not going to have any clients. They have to, to understand you and have that, that kind of working relationship with you and understand where you're coming from that you can get the job done before they even give you a chance to get the job done. So my advice to people is to get the certification, go work for one of the big gym chains like Bally's Gold, LA Fitness, whatever, so they can teach you how to sell the product that you have, which is basically your knowledge, and that gets you on track and helps you practice towards being on your own. Biosetraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below. www.biosetraining.com. And thank you for listening for Storytime, and we're out.